Welcome everybody to this Tari Lab series of Rust coding. In this series, I want to try something a little bit fun and different. The idea being that I want to try and focus on idiomatic Rust. So even if you come from a C or a Java or a Python background, you'll know how to write Rust code, um, but you may not be familiar with some of the more expressive features of the Rust language. And that's what this series is going to focus on. And because of that, I'm going to move a little bit away from deep blockchain concepts and just solve some nice simple problems, some of them not so simple. Um, and those problems are gonna come from the advent of code challenge, which comes out every year um, and is a fun and I think light way to demonstrate some of the features that Rust has to offer. So the intention is to solve as many of these problems as possible. Um, as we move on in the series, the problems are going to get fairly in depth and, and difficult. And so we may skip over a few of them um, in the interests of time. And uh, you know, if it's not really serving the purpose of illustrating Rust's idiomatic features. What can you expect? Well, I mean, in particular, I think you'll be surprised, even if you come from a Python background, at how expressive and succinct Rust code can be. And when you combine that with the absolute blistering performance that Rust offers, uh, it is quite a compelling argument to get over that learning curve and, and really dive in and learn Rust. I will be posting the solutions up on GitHub, so you'll be able to follow along. Um, and with that, let's dive in. So today, all I want to do is really set up the project and set up the scaffolding around uh, the, the problem sets. And so let's, let's do that now. So I'm going to assume that you are a little bit familiar with Rust, that you, you know the basics. And but what, what you're really looking for is a way to dive in and learn a little bit more about the, the idiomatic Rust language features. Okay, so I'm not going to, this is not a basic Rust tutorial. There are plenty of places on the internet for that. The Rust book, of course, is a fantastic resource. Um, so go ahead and grab those. And uh, if you're, but if you're at that sort of intermediate level, then this is definitely the series for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and start and create our, our package, which uh, will create a basic source scaffolding for us um, and create a Hello World program. Okay, so what we want to do for this Advent of Code project is have a small driver that takes something off the command line and just tells the project which problem set we want to solve. Okay. Uh, so what we'll see here is a little bit of command line handling, a little bit of string matching. Uh, so it shouldn't be too unfamiliar with you, but let's see how we go along. So the first thing we want to do is read in the command line parameters. So um, let's do that. So the command line parameters are in the standard library uh, env module. and it's in the args function and we want to collect these into a vector okay usually when you run collect you need to tell the compiler which what type you uh, what type you want because there's often some ambiguity there okay and what we want to do is read in the first one. So um, we're going to say, let the problem and it's number one because the zeroth element of the um, of the command line arguments is the name of the program itself. Okay. Um, now you can see that it returns an option to a reference to of a string um, we want to convert this into an str so we're going to just map this uh, 
Okay. And if it doesn't, uh, if the, we haven't provided something, then let's provide a default. Okay. And now we want to, depending on what the value of problem set is, we want to do some, we want to solve the various problems. So day 1a, for example, we can go and call the day 1a problem. We don't have that yet. Um, so let's just put nothing there. And otherwise, we want to basically um, return an error message. Okay, and I'm going to put this into a result and then print that result to the screen. Okay, and that should be enough for now. So let's just get our types. In a row and Let's see if that runs. There we go. So that's the infrastructure for the, uh, the overall scaffolding project. In the next video, we will go ahead and solve day one's problems. Until then, see you.